I now like to welcome Wayne's wife and the inspiration for the Invisible Disabilities Association. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Sherry Cannell. I need three hands. <laughs> um, I guess my invisible disability is showing. I'm having used cards tonight. <laughs> I want to thank everyone for coming this evening. It's just so important that you're here. I think, thank you TW Telecom for supporting my husband and for everybody, but I want to also say, where's Sarah Scan? Sarah Scan, you saved my life, thank you. <laughs> when people don't believe that I have brain damage or uh, chemical sensitivities, they think it's all in my head. I show them, I say, oopsie, it is in my head, huh? <laughs> it's actual brain damage and it, it's very real. But anyhow, um, just bear with me. Um, a lot of you know my story, some people do not. Um, I've always been a very active, goal-oriented person. Um, I had a part-time job as a caretaker for nine horses when I was just 10 years old. And I worked at a pet store when I was 13 and a clothing store when I was 14. At the age of 14, I was also bitten by a tick and started having chronic headaches, infections, and the flu and bronchitis. I didn't know until I was 28 that I had Lyme disease. Yet I powered through it all with determination because nothing was gonna stop me. Want to take my cards, Ed, when I'm done with them? <laughs> Thanks. He already told me he'd help. <laughs> so in high school and college, I was a cheerleader. Surprise. Um, I sang and danced in musicals. I modeled in fashion shows. I acted in commercials, and I obtained three college degrees. In 1991, I was planning out my master's degree when I was suddenly paralyzed from the ribs down. I was barely able to sit up or even take a shower, and I was diagnosed at that time with multiple sclerosis. With a never fail attitude, I figured I'd just get a little rest and be back to my life in no time. But weeks of desperately going from doctor to doctor turned into months, and then they turned into years. With lots of physical therapy and treatment, I started to walk again even though I can't walk very far or stand for very long. But then people didn't get it. They said, well, if you're walking, why can't you go back to work? They didn't understand that it was the feeling like I have the flu every single day. And that includes unbearable pain, fatigue, memory loss, cognitive dysfunctions, and brain damage that renders me unable to even care for my own daily needs. Before I knew it, I lost my career and my dreams and my life. And I was left with a full-time job of just trying to do my physical therapy, get a meal, take a shower, get dressed, comb out my hair, or go to a doctor's appointment. In an attempt to help people understand how this illness had stolen my life and how I wanted my life back more than anyone could ever even imagine, I started writing in my journal and giving people handouts. Say, here, this is what I'm going through. Hopefully they could understand better. I met Wayne a year after the onset of my disability, and we were married in 1994. <laughs> people are always asking him, mm, you married him knowing she was sick? <laughs> And he always says, yes, if you had met her, you would have married her too. <laughs> now, I love that answer because what he's really trying to say is that he married me for me and who I am and not for what I can or cannot do anymore. So I think that takes a rare character. It really does, because I, I don't think I would have done the same. <laughs> Unless it was Kevin Sorbo. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> Wayne and I met in 
Wayne and I gave out copies of our writings to people we met. One day, he offered to put them up on the internet. That way, instead of trying to explain over and over to people that I met how I could no longer do the things I looked like I could do, I would just say, hey, go check out the website. So when we were trying to title the website, I racked and racked my brain to think of a term that would describe the twilight zone I was living in, the travesty of losing so many hopes and dreams, but being faced with people time after time telling me, I must not be trying hard enough because I don't look sick. Then it came to me, I have an invisible disability. <laughs> And so the term was born, and it's widely used today. We figured a few friends and family might wander into the website from time to time. We had no idea there'd be so many others going through the same disbelief, judgment, and abandonment that I had been experiencing. Sadly, it seems that this kind of reaction is the norm. We started receiving emails from people around the world telling us, you have put exactly into words what I have been trying to say to my friends and family. And we heard story after story from spouses, mothers, friends, and family, and how they had reunited after they read our booklet. Wayne and I quickly learned there are millions of people out there not only suffering with debilitating conditions and losing their careers and their homes, but also the love and compassion of spouses, children, and friends. So Wayne felt called to create the Invisible Disabilities Association. He wanted to be there. He wanted an organization that would be there for all who feel alone and misunderstood. Now, I realize it's hard to fathom, after, but it's true. After some time passes following the onset of an illness and the person is unable to return to their life and their normal daily living, people are often accused of malingering, exaggerating, and even faking illnesses. These are people just like me, people who hate being sick, people who had plans for their lives, people who cannot stand missing out on the things that give them joy people who would give anything to get well. So, I sit before you today, and I tell you that although I may look fine, it takes me everything I have just to get from one room to another. Every day, I have to believe that I am going to find something somewhere that's gonna give me my life back because I cannot stand for just one more minute this torture. <laughs> Yet I've been judged, I've been cussed at, I've been bullied, and I've been left behind by countless friends. Sadly, I'm not alone. There are approximately 45 million Americans limited in their daily living by illness to various degrees. Of those considered to have a severe disability, 74% don't use a wheelchair or walker. So contrary to popular belief and what our society would believe, most disabilities are actually invisible. So the world doesn't understand, but Ida does. I have met so many people who have said Ida literally saved their life. And I believe it. The pain, the losses, the anguish, and the judgment is unbearable. And it often leads to utter despair. The lack of understanding literally steals our hope. Anyone going through this needs people who understand and are supportive. We need awareness and education. And we need resources to share with our friends and our family so that we can get help to repair our relationships and end misunderstanding and abandonment. Ida is there for us. Ida gives hope and reaches around the world through websites, books, pamphlets, articles, videos, 
radio interviews, seminars, events, special projects, social network, social media, Facebook, Twitter, you name it. Wayne's unrelenting passion for those who are hurting drives him to keep helping, keep providing hope. This is Wayne's calling. It's all that his life has pointed to, all that he has worked towards. People are shocked when they find out that Wayne and the Ida team all make this happen as volunteers outside of their careers and families. Ida does just as much or more than a lot of organizations with the staff, but they can't keep it up. They do amazing work and, and they have a large list of more incredible plans and projects they're so excited to put into action. It's time to get Wayne in on staff and, and take this already amazing organization to another level beyond imagination. Millions of people need Ida, and Ida needs our support. So share Ida with the potential sponsors, coworkers, colleagues, friends, family in your community. Thank you so much for coming because we appreciate your support. Donate tonight. Consider being part of the IDA team by becoming a sponsor or being a monthly donor. Help us help others. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Sherry. Uh, first of all, for your honesty, especially with that Kevin Sorbo thing. <laughs> and we also, <laughs> and we, yeah, there you go. And we also see why you are such an inspiration. So thank you, Sherry.